Well, Parliament on Tuesday passed the Office of Special Prosecutors Bill after a marathon meeting. There were fears it may not be passed due to the numerous amendments to the bill, which was laid last month. Ranking member of Parliament's Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, Nusaf Saini, is hopeful the office will not which hand officials of the past administration. He spoke with our parliamentary correspondent, Joseph Opokugapo. We just, we've just done the third reading. It's now waiting for the pres uh, presidential assent. I believe that by... I uh, understand the president will be traveling today. I believe that by the close of the day, the president will append his signature to it. And like I said earlier in the day, uh, this was intended to be passed today so that I can find space in the budget. Uh, what has happened tonight is a demonstration of our commitment towards establishing institutions of state that will fight corruption and corruption-related offenses. Uh, the MPP in this manifesto believed that this institution is, is important for its uh, fight against corruption. I uh, brought a, a bill to Parliament for us to consider the establishment of that institution. We've done that. Now the board is squarely within the court of the MPP and they have to help the institutions of state and especially the office of a special prosecutor to fight corruption. So it, it went through a lot of up and downs. Do we have a clean quality bill that can stand the test of time, you think? Uh, I, like, I can only re-echo the words of the uh, Attorney General. The efficacy of any bill, the efficacy of any law is tried in the courts. Now, uh, so uh, anything can happen. But I can tell you that as a committee, as parliament, we we'll use our best endeavors to ensure that we have a bill that will stand the test of time and meet the reasonable and legitimate expectations of the people of this country. Elsewhere, authorities at the Watt prisons fear there could be an outbreak of an epidemic if immediate steps are not taken to decongest the prisons. Though the prison was built for less than 100 inmates, it currently houses more than 200. The congestion remains a problem even after the recent transfer of some of the inmates to other prisons. The issue was raised when officials of the National Investment Bank visited the prisons to donate some food items. Rafik Salam reports. The war prisons in the next few years will be celebrating its 100th year since its establishment. It was established to take care of less than 100 inmates. It has nine cells. Each cell is required to take a maximum of 10 inmates. The cruel reality, however, is that some of the cells have a maximum of 35 inmates. Having fears that there could be an outbreak of an epidemic due to the inhuman conditions at the cells, authorities have converted a storeroom into a cell, at least to reduce the congestion at the prisons. At a short ceremony organized by the War Branch of the National Investment Bank, to donate some food items and toiletries to the inmates of their prisons, Superintendent Pai Ozeri, who spoke on behalf of the acting Upper West Regional Commander of the Ghana Prison Service, lamented the dehumanizing conditions that the inmates are living in. If you go around our cells, they are inadequate. The cells are very, very, very small. And we have almost about 30 to 35 in that cell. So they cannot sleep. Recently, some were transferred to Isawam, yet they are still full. The cells are still full. Apart from the issue of congestion at the prisons, they also have inadequate facilities to train the inmates in their bid to reform them. Most of them, we reform them, they come out as useful human beings and they join the, the, the entire community and the society as well. You can see that most of them are within the working class. They are vibrant. If we turn them out well, they will join us and then make an impact to the society and Mother Ghana as well. So we are pleading to all those people listening to us that we need adequate facilities, toilet facilities, our workshops, our teaching. We teach, people, we teach them here. We have SHS. We have uh, uh, informal. And we need uh, writing materials as well to uh, equip them. We need tailoring shops. We need so many things here. But I know the government alone cannot do it. So we've been on air several times to plead with philanthropists, other institutions like you and others, to come and assist us so that we can 
do our work well. Acting World Branch Manager of the National Investment Bank, Eric Agri, stated that the donation of the items to the inmates is part of the bank's social corporate responsibility. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wow. No, the Center of Awareness, uh, the center that develops immune boosters to find HIV and other diseases, is calling on government to support it as the demand from the international community and Ghanaians is overwhelming the company. Currently, between 5,000 to 70,000 bottles of the core FS drugs are demanded on a daily basis, but the company is able to produce between 100 and 200 bottles daily. The center says it is overwhelmed by the demands and wants government to step in. Richard Kojanyako has the rest of the story. The Center of Awareness, a non-governmental organization and a medicine manufacturing firm, has its laboratory located in the Abra Sebu Kwamankasa district. The Ghana AIDS Commission recently invited the Center of Awareness and other research institutions to brainstorm on the ways to ensure a harmonization of the researches that are conducted in these centers for the benefit of humanity. Government officials on Monday visited the site and were full of excitement at the prospect of the place should government intervene to support the sites. The firm currently has the capacity to produce between 100 and 200 bottles of the core FS drugs, a drug that has been widely accepted to boost the immune system of humans. This figure falls below the demands from Ghana and the international community. The daily requests from these communities stands between 5,000 and 7,000 bottles, a capacity that falls below the strength of the company. The CEO of the center, Dr. Samuel Atodankan, says because of the efficacy of the drugs and the high demand for the immune boosters, government should intervene to help expand the site, grow into an international drug research site for the benefit of the country. Um, um, we've been calling for the support of the government just because um, what we have, the core FS as a uh, has assumed an international character and everybody everywhere in the world needs uh, this product. So economically there is the need for a proper expansion to bring a lot of foreign currency into the country. That is why the expansion is very very necessary. Um, the demand is too high and we cannot supply and uh, that is why we are um, um, calling uh, falling on the president to to support especially to use um, this project as one of the one district one factory policy DC for Abrasi Bukwamankasi district Abba Hagen who led government officials to the site relishes the job prospects so this place is going to be another big factory and when this factory is on it's going to uh, add up, open up, and the, the workers will be more. It means he's going to create more employment in my district. Because if uh, he wants workers in this factory, but me, so far as this thing is in AAK, I, I will benefit. Always in my office, I went job to do. I went job to, so if this thing he sent, he's, create, he's creating a job, it's going to help me in the district. The center is currently collaborating with research institutions to bring together renowned scientists and researchers so that the standard protocols set by the World Health Organizations would be met. Richard Kojenyako, Joy News, Cape Coast. The Institute for Educational Planning and Administration at the University of Cape Coast has begun a project known as the Adopt a School to help resolve leadership and governance challenges in the country's public basic school system. Speaking at the launch of the project, Director of the Institute, Dr. Michael Amachi, explained the aim is to get a senior lecturer to mentor school heads and provide guidance in the administration of the schools to improve learning outcomes. Another report filed by Richard Kwajonyako. Public basic schools have experienced some of the worst performances in some districts of the country, with some districts scoring 0% during the BECE. Educationists have suggested several factors that could account for such happening. 
the Institute for Educational Planning and Administration at the University of Cape Coast, a human resource and educational leadership training institute, says there could be better performances than the performances currently in the public basic schools. As a result, the institute has launched what they call Adopt a School Project. This project will see a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Coast adopting a school and mentoring it to ensure a continuous professional development. Dr. Michael Amache is a director of the Institute for Educational Planning and Administration. We believe that the missing link in our education today is a lack of focus on who leads our schools. And so IEPA focusing on the school head is in the right direction that we target the leaders and the leaders are going to lead and it will trickle down to all the members of the school community. So that was why we gathered today to launch this noble enterprise so that together we can build the capacity of school management teams. Um, according to the roadmap, what we have from KEA, we are going to lower Chufu district and then to Ascent South, Ascent North. So our target is by the end of March, we would have gone to all the districts in Central Region. And then we'll move to Greater Accra Region and then to the Eastern Region, Western Region, and then we'll move up North. And part of what we'll be doing is we'll be training others who will take up from us. So when we get to a district, we identify the members of the school management committee, the members of the district education oversight committee, and work with them. And as we move on, there will be the, our presence on the ground to continue the mentorship program that IEPA has begun. Some of the heads of the schools in the KEA municipality spoke to Joy News after the event. From Isama United, JHS, A, B, and C. The program is really, I really appreciated it because uh, as if I have this problem in my school with academic performance. Yes, so the introduction of adopted school and rightly as the professor said, uh, they will be part of us, not we learning and go and implement it in the school. I really appreciated it so much. And I believe it is going to help KEA District to improve up our academic performances. I'm Godfrey Roxon, the head of Commander MAGHSA. It is bringing to light schools in KEA. Head teachers are going to be given more avenues. Teachers in the schools, even students are going to be enhanced because they are going to see lectures from the IEPA, the UCC as a whole. Academic work is going to be improved, capacity burden, and a whole lot. So really, I have really appreciated the program. The IEPA is a premier institute in the country that conducts research in educational issues to inform educational policy makers as well as train educational planners and administrators at all levels of education in Ghana. Richard Kwejonyakon, Joy News, Cape Coast. From the central region, we turn our attention to the Ashanti region. We stay in the capital in Kumasi, where police and military personnel have been deployed to force defiant traders of the pavements and other unauthorized places. It follows the traders' refusal to comply with an order by city authorities for all traders and transport operators to relocate to the city's race course and other designated markets. Some of the affected traders have argued they have been unable to secure spaces at the new sites. Here's Love FM's Kwesi Deborah with more. The Kumasi Traditional Council teamed up with Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly to relocate traders occupying pavements and unauthorized places in Kumasi last week. The move follows an eviction notice served by the Shanti Regional Coordinating Council calling for vacation of such places by Monday. The arrangement also precedes the final funeral rites of the late Tasantehima, Efia Kubi Sewampem II. The movement of traders from some parts of Edum, Kejitia, Pampaso and the Kumasi Zoo has however suffered a setback. Security forces were seen standing at vantage points in the central business district, but the traders wouldn't have any of that. 
that region where we are standing specifically is a piece that uh, do, as you can see the streets are hollow the streets are empty there used to be cars all around here taxi cabs and also trotro but they are all not here as a result of the decongestion exercise by the kma today they've been pleased and also joint joint military and police action the traders are still back on the road. We're going to speak with them why they decided to stand in the streets and do their business. That much for us. I told you now, as a military police, I'm a two more, but what I saw, I didn't hear. Oh, and I said, I saw, I don't see anybody. Oh, be a normal officer truck come to the so I say, and as you said, I'm putting for me this one. I come for so I'm musician man. I join and just in the past, all person who be one. There should have been a proper dialogue. Evicting us when you are in power isn't proper. I don't like the military action. Who can two or more? If you are me and the party have forty thousand, fifty thousand, that's what people more more call. Every person trying to answer. I say what? Now most we say military. No, we have a bit. Me 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 military. Yeah, me. I know. I know. I know. I know. Afghanistan. Oh, I can talk about how. Why must be military? Eh, eh, eh. Eh, say we be a. We can't vacate here easily like that. No matter the force, we would have to return. We are afraid of the military action. The Abinji market is not conducive for us. They have sold them out to others. I am a member of the NPP. We want Manado to take action. Okay. The Abinci market is not properly arranged to accommodate us. We went there, but couldn't get a place. That's it. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. All right, that's it for the news. At least for now, we've got a lot more news at myjoyonline.com. But it's all really about the 2018 budget. Today, Finance Minister will step into Parliament to present that budget. We're all very expectant. If you look at the front page of the Ghanaian Times newspaper, it says expectant Ghanaians await. Indeed, we touched base with our colleagues across the regions uh, yesterday and lots of people have different expectations. Roland Walker is in Parliament. He joins us live. He will tell us what's happening right now. Roland, if you can hear me, good morning. Hello, well, Roland. Good morning to you, Mama Vian. How are you? I'm very well, very well. I hope you are too. Yes, I am. Uh, the, the, the whole st strenuous effort to make sure that we all yeah. wake up and meet the day is always something that lives with us. So yeah. I guess uh, it's part of a normal journey for us. While for many Ghanaians, it'll be a time that they're, of course, waiting for the finance minister at least um, the third time within the year, especially when the, pres the president uh, assumed office to come before parliament uh, to read government's financial statements for the next financial year 2018. Mm. Amazing atmosphere, Roland. I can see you right now, and it's incredible. But it's too early for parliamentarians to be in parliament, correct? Yes, genuinely, it is too early. Um, even the main gates where they have all the security procedures and uh, the normal checks being undertaken will be open by 8.30. The security are making sure that um, the car parks are also available 
for the parliamentarians and the other dignitaries who have been invited to be part of um, the whole ceremony and be at the public gallery to witness the reading of the financial statement of the government of Ghana. Uh, I have also made all those arrangements ready. And so yeah. we're also ready. Uh, back inside, even though I'm just at the front edges of the main uh, chamber of parliament, you could find that a number of media houses from across the capital and across the country have made their way here, genuinely broadcasting live also reporting live or proceedings as they have all the analysis just like we're doing uh, to make sure that they, they bring the best of the previews to the viewers. Mm. All right, uh, Roland, is there anything that you're picking ahead? Uh, there are so many things that we've heard, particularly from the minority as well, that's contained in this, in this budget. But uh, is there anything that has been open to you even at 6.27 a.m. ahead of the main reading? Well, there had been a, a lot of uh, so-called, you know, the experts we always tend to interview and also interact with in the media, some of whom I've also spoken to prior to coming on air, who have given certain indications that uh, because of the way macroeconomic indicators have been managed by government and the other relativities, we could also witness um, improved revenue generation within the next year. We could also uh, witness um, a, a lot more uh, recurrent expenditure as far as um, we look at the sectors, education, health, others, uh, all be made available in the next financial statement. It's all the jargons that have been put together, <laughs> but just uh, giving us the indication that mm. government also will have the best of revenue, but also needs to make sure that because social spending will be high, mm. then it also has to check how it brings the receipts in into the coffers of the state of Ghana but also making sure that uh, the other targets are also met, ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, Roland, whilst you're there, I'm holding it down here, and I'll join you uh, in the course of the day. Uh, but just real quick, <laughs> before, before, before we go, uh, tell us what to I, expect I, from our coverage I, from I, I really love your statement, holding it down. <laughs> yes, I am. But what should viewers expect from <laughs> us with this coverage today, Roland? Uh, today, excitement all over, apart from radio, online, and also TV, and across the various um, social media platforms that we have in the multimedia setup. We are also, as Join News, going to bring you the best of the live previews. We're going mm -hmm. to speak to experts, but also leading members of the minority as well as the majority, and even those who have been invited to be part of the public to witness this. Genuinely, we're also going to speak to uh, media uh, experts, also to speak experienced uh, practitioners who have genuine concerns to raise, but also would have some observations to make. Mm. And today, all the, bi the, the best previews will be right here. And, and I believe that you've already started um, the, the trailblazing, and I know that we're going to continue to make sure until it is finished, we're not done. Yeah. Uh, but Roland, in Parliament, what can you have for breakfast? What, what's around? There's um, no cocoa There's joints. a place where the MPs and even members of the press corps usually would have um, the usual, you know, bourgeois kind of uh, meal, um, <laughs> the normal egg, <laughs> a bit of omelette. <laughs> some sausages, mm. etc., so, but not uh, cocoa. I think if yeah. you want cocoa, it's outside the presence of Parliament. Uh, I know, I know that you don't like cocoa very much, myself too. But today we'll try and take some fruit juice before we start. All over. <laughs> You've been elevated, Roland. Enjoy your stay in Parliament. I'll join you pretty shortly. That's my colleague Roland Walker, live <laughs> from Parliament. Uh, and you know that is to tell you that we will be heavy with the budget today. We'll bring you all the sides, all the angles live coverage, live presentation, even as the finance minister uh, presents the budget. Now, when we come back, we will do the newspapers. I've got the newspapers right in front of me. Uh, some of the papers are reporting on the budget. It's their main front page headlines. Others are doing other things. So we'll look at all that is happening. And then we'll touch base online as well. Now, what's happening in Zimbabwe is interesting. Is the military in charge of Zimbabwe now? or Robert Mugabe is. Very interesting details coming up in the review. So stay right here with us. You're watching The AM Show right here on Joy News.